details concerning the origin and descent of the Bantu peoples living in South Africa are obscured by the passage of centuries. But apparently the Bantu developed as an ethnic group somewhere in North, Northeast or Central East Africa as a result of intermixing between the Negroid peoples of Africa and Hamite migrants from the East. Although these Bantu people are presumably of the same origin, and although the word Bantu, meaning people, is generally applied to all the tribes, each main group has developed its own unique language and culture. And now a man who has lived and worked with these people will take you on a personally conducted tour to the homelands of the Bantu, Mr. Mervyn John. Centuries ago, the Bantu people started migrating from somewhere in North Africa, southwards along the great inland lakes, and crossing the Limpopo River, they entered South Africa. The different groups spread over the whole of South Africa and settled in various parts of the country. To many of us, the Bantu peoples in South Africa may look alike, but in fact, they consist of various distinctive groups who in their language and way of life differ greatly from one another. The first group we shall discuss is the Nguni, to which the Zulus in Natal belong. Zulu huts have a distinctive beehive shape. Long, pliant branches are planted into the ground, bent to the required shape, and then tied into place with grass ropes. The framework is then thatched or covered with grass mats. Handmade clay pots, grass mats and baskets, as well as the grinding stone, are essential equipment for the Zulu housewife. This young girl takes great pride in the beaded ornaments which she has made. All household duties are performed by the women. The cattle kraal is the man's domain, and no women or girls are allowed to enter it. Every morning, the boys are instructed in their duties for the day, and in this way, a Zulu boy starts learning from his father at an early age. The Khosa live in the Transkei and in parts of the Eastern Cape. 